Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Learn with Jason. Today on the show, we have uh, Sarah Drasner, um, one of my personal heroes. Thanks so much for coming on to the show. Thanks for Holy having me. Buckets. Did that just work? <laughs> <laughs> and we're already off to the races with the sound effects. Um, so, Sarah, for those of us who who aren't familiar with your work, do you want to give us a little bit of your, your kind of your background, what you're doing now? Sure. Um, I am head of developer experience at Netlify. Um, I uh, manage a team of amazing, amazing developers over there, and they're all fantastic. And you should check them out and follow them. I can give a list of them. Um, and uh, Netlify is a really, really cool place, which I you know, love and wanted to work for because I love their product. Um, if you haven't checked it out, it's really easy to deploy sites and forms and things. Um, I also am a staff writer at CSS Tricks and I'm a Vue core team member. Um, I'm not doing any of those things on this chat. I'm do <laughs> showing how to work with 3JS, which isn't really part of my job, but I just really love playing with 3JS. And it's something that I do on the weekends because I think it's really fun. Um, and I have some talks about it too. And did you do the, this animation here, is this 3JS? Uh, it's not, it's SVG. Oh, cool. Okay. So that's like a whole other thing. Um, yeah. yeah so uh, today we were gonna play with, with 3JS, which uh, a little while back, we had um, Paul Henschel on the show, who is the author of like React Spring and React 3 Fiber. And he gave us a really, like a really quick overview of setting up um, like 3JS. We did a cube and then we animated it with some like really fun stuff. Uh, so this is gonna be great because we can, we can kind of go into the vanilla part of this because uh, we're not gonna use React at all today, right? Yeah, so I did watch that one. It was super great. And like, if you haven't seen it, it's so awesome. You should definitely check it out. Um, they basically, they make like a rocket ship. They, they import a model, which is this rocket ship. And then it like is able to animate. And if you import a model, there's like a lot that you can do. Um, and also they're using some abstractions with um, that React library that he was uh, showing. We're not going to use a library today. I mean, we are going to use a library in the sense that we're using 3JS, but we're really getting a little bit closer um, to the bare metal. We're going to work with vanilla JavaScript and just 3JS. What I like about doing it that way is that it ports over to any framework. It um, you, you can literally, like if you go to my site, um, sarah.dev, or wait, is that right? <laughs> yeah, I think that's my site. Um, yeah, uh, there's like a 3JS animation. If you hover on the I make things, it breaks apart too. Um, so you can see like these roses break apart. And that's not made with any kind of like abstraction layer, right? Like that's not made with um, a view something or other, even though the site is made in view. Um, it's just made with vanilla JavaScript. So you can, I can port it over to React later or like if, uh, I decided to try Svelte or whatever. I can use um, this with that. So I, I'm kind of showing you some basic parts. And what I really like about the kind of learning the basics is that a lot of people think that they can't make stuff like this because they're not a designer or something like that. And really what we're showing today is that you can do things just with the JavaScript that you know, just by manipulating some JavaScript. Um, if you know for loops, if you know recursion, if you know like that, like so many things are open to you just by knowing those, those pieces. Yeah, and I'm really excited to get into that. Um, so what do you think is the best way to start? We we had talked about a couple different strategies and uh, I think you had ideas. Yeah, let's use, um, let's use, since we're just using uh, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, let's just use CodePen um, and that way we can share it afterwards too. Yeah. Um, I quite like it. I'll do, um, I'll create a live version or a collab version of this pen and it's like a nothing thing at the moment. So here, I'll send this to you in the chat. And let me know if when you see that. Okay, and let me pull that up. Okay, yeah. yeah. So okay, I'm, so I'm in. <laughs> All right, let me just just in case let me see if I you can see hi Jason in the JS panel. Yep, it's showing up. All right, great. Um, and maybe it might be best for you to go into the change view and do the side one so that you can see things. Yeah, like the other one. Yeah, uh, uh, the other one. 
Oh, the other one, this one. Yeah. Okay. So that cool. you can see, um, and then I can show you how to like open and collapse views too. So the first thing that we're going to do here is I'm just going to make, I'm going to make one HTML element and it has Emmet in it. So I can do uh, canvas ID canvas and then open that up. And then I'm just going to close that HTML down. So if you want to like pull the little oh, CSS so we would need to add code and close right? it. Perfect. And then in the CSS, I'm only going to do one thing in there, which is to do body margin. Oh, I can't type when people are watching me for some reason. <laughs> it's like, I think like, I don't know if you ever watched the Simpsons, but it's like my fingers can't think overflow hidden. Um, and then you can close that up. Oh, I can close this one up too. Okay. Yeah. We're good. We're mostly just going to hang out in the JS tab. The, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to open up the gear for JS and I'm going to add some scripts. So I'm going to add, we have gear. a preprocessor pre that's Babel or Babel. <laughs> um, I'm going to add in three JS and then I'm also going to add in this trackball controls so we can pan around the scene. I think in your other one, you use those two. Cool. Um, Great. And the the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into settings at the top, which I don't think you and now, have. When, where did you find these? Did, did you just go to like the 3JS site and grab? Um... Actually, I typed in that search box, 3JS. Oh, cool. So if you just type in like trackball. Yeah. I guess you right. since you already have it, it's already, it's not showing up, but. Yeah, but you can write anything. React, you can write. Yeah. Greensock. Cool. All sorts of stuff. That's yeah. handy. And then you don't have it for some reason. I think maybe it's because my pen, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself a run tab at the top. Um, mm. And uh, what it does is it allows it, if you are in code pen and you hit click settings and you go to the behavior tab, it will say, it will have a bunch of boxes. And at the bottom, it's like enable the run tab. Um, the reason why I have a run tab is because sometimes I want to code a bunch of things and then see it play out and not mm. play it immediately. Uh, it's particularly useful when you're doing things like for loops and stuff like that in case you, you know, accidentally create uh, an infinite loop, right. which I've done so many times. Like, I think my most chatted thing to Chris Coyer is like, how do I turn off the JS? in code man again because i'm like always breaking his sight yeah. <laughs> like, uh, it's this again <laughs> um so uh so i have the run tab so that i'm only having it display when i'm doing those things cool okay um and so now to just kind of to recap here we've set up just a canvas element and then we set up the body to have uh, full width. And we don't need to do that with the canvas. Like the canvas itself will take up full width. Yeah, we're going to tell it to. Oh, yeah. OK, cool. And so then we loaded in our third party libraries, 3JS and a trackball control. And um, we can't see it on my on my computer, but you turned off um, the auto execution of, of JavaScript. That's right. Perfect. Yep. So cool. then I think we're ready to start, right? Yeah, so I'm gonna move. If you see my eye darting around, I'm gonna move the zoom. Oh, so we would need to add to code. the side a it's little a bit <laughs> so that I can <laughs> see what I'm typing. Um, and yeah, here we go. Okay, so the first thing that I'm gonna do, I there's a little bit of I'm gonna have you like we talked a little bit earlier. There's a lot of setup for not a lot, but like a little bit of setup for mm. JS. Um, and so part of what we're going to do here is set up the renderer and the scene and things. And I'll kind of talk through some of those things. Feel free to ask me questions. Um, then I'll kind of hand pass the baton to Jason and we'll talk through things a little bit more. It's just that there's some muscle memory attached to that sure. first setup. Um, <laughs> so, um, so it might be um, more productive if we just do it that way. Does that yeah, sound good? Yeah, that, that sounds great. So I'll just keep my hands up here for now. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> not to say that you can't join me if you want to. If you're like, I got it, I know what a render is, then feel free. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I guess I can. I can do the awkward moose while you while you oh, type, good. right? <laughs> the jazz are kind of like an awkward moose. Well, I think that's it's so it's jazz moose, and then there's oh. awkward moose, 
right? <laughs> wow. Yeah, I'm, I'm learning so much here and learning with Jason. Um, <laughs> all right. So um, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to give ourselves a renderer, a camera. We're going to do some controls. We're going to do a scene and we're going to, you know, get all of those things just kind of ready to go. And then I'm going to do, I kind of always do this in my, um, in my 3JS pins. I've got window dot inner width um, and then path and then height is window dot inner height. Ah, I'm going to say that a lot. Um, <laughs> and I use, <laughs> I use uh, window dot inner width and height a lot in, in these kind of pins. Um, for, gonna... for those of us who haven't seen that, this is just, you're literally saying like, okay, so the, if this is our window, which that's how code pen works, we're saying we want the width of it to be this like inner width is from the, the right to the left of this and the height is top to bottom. Yeah. And the reason why we're declaring these renders and cameras and controls and scenes outside in kind of global scope um, is because we're going to use them in a few different functions that we're going to create below. Um, in kind of like a three, a, a self-contained 3JS, there's many ways of like importing and exporting those kind of things in an application, but we're not going to go through all of that stuff today. For now, we're just going to have it kind of hang out here and then make some functions. So I'm going to make an initializing function. So I'm going to say just like function init and we're going to also call the init function above and i'm going to keep dropping these below so i'll just keep like working on these kind of initializing things but i will also comment the different sections so here's the render mm -hmm. and what we're going to do is we're going to say like render and we don't have to declare it again because we've already declared it above. So I don't have to say like const render or anything here um, is new three and three is always capitalized. Um, and that's going to be. Uh, and this is available because we added that um, that third party script in the settings. That's right. And so like if you're using it in a React project, you import star as three capitalized uh, from three um, underscore or not capitalized. <laughs> um, so, uh, so what three is, is it is an abstraction on top of WebGL. So what we're doing here is we're giving ourselves a renderer to add to WebGL. And then three is going to give us some nice abstractions to work with it. So even though three will seem a little bare metal compared to some other things like um, the other, you know, screencast, this is actually like pretty, um, pretty abstracted and they just kind of expose these pieces for us, which is pretty nice. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to get um, in the canvas, we're going to say document dot get element by ID and um, I think it's ID, right? Yeah, it's yeah. ID. Um, and then we're going to say canvas and that's because we said canvas here. Um, if we called it Dancing Tango Monkey Pants, we would have to call it Dancing Tango Monkey Pants. <laughs> Why didn't we call it Dancing Tango Monkey Pants? <laughs> we should have, actually. Um, <laughs> that was a really big oversight on my part. Um, so we're also going to say anti-alias true. That will make it look a little bit nicer. If It also impacts performance. So if you need, if you don't care too much about the way that it looks um, and you care more about performance, that can also be set to false. Um, I'm going to say renderer dot uh, set clear color. And then um, basically I can add whatever hex goes after this line. So this is going to be what the um, what we want that canvas to render in terms of like what color we want it to be. So I'm basically saying I want it to be a dark gray, right? Like zero, zero, okay. zero, zero would be black. One 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 is like lighter gray. Two 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 two. Like I don't know that many of the hex colors, but that's that's one. Okay. Um, and the zero x that is because we're doing it as like something computer science, I assume. Yeah, it's like a way of. 
it's like a way of uh, telling that, that we're going to use a hex color. Um, there's okay. more detail that I could give there, but then that would take a whole other stream. Okay, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> that, have, we'll uh, leave that as some research for the for the interested. Yeah, I have a whole um, article called um, Nerd's Guide to, Guide to Color on the web that you can mm. check out if you're interested in like nerdy color stuff um and it's like it's like i think it was like 18 pages long in google docs before i ported it to css tricks and chris wow. was like you know you can write smaller articles <laughs> you don't have to write novels every time um which is true i don't but I, somehow i just get rambly and you know color is really cool um, so I'm going to set the size of the renderer to be the width and I, you know, it helps to spell it correctly, um, to be the width and the height. Um, I'm like, less oh, and now it's, in my colons. and now um, it's so done I'm gonna, it. I'm going to run it and then, uh, you should see it's all black. Oh, yours is already running. Okay. Well, you already saw it was all black. I did not. <laughs> so, <laughs> Uh, so, okay, great. So now we have a renderer. Now we have a canvas to put things on and it's a dark gray. Um, the next thing that we're going to set up is a camera. Um, and you can, like, it's pretty well named, right? Like uh, the renderer is what's rendering to the, you know, document and the camera is going to be like what we see. Mm -hmm. um, and the camera has some things in it. So I'm going to put it on first and then I'll walk you through what those are new three dot perspective camera. There's a bunch of different cameras. I pretty much always use perspective camera, but there's good docs for it if you want to check out more about which kinds of cameras and stuff. But yeah, okay, I, so I feel like there's at some point in the future, there will be a like, let's dive deep into this and talk about very specific angles of things like I'll, I'll you know, I'll, I'm going to ask for so many recommendations from you of, of people in this community to have on the show next, because oh, totally. there's, I feel like this rabbit hole goes so deep. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's a really fun rabbit hole too. Um, and you know, you can just make such cool stuff with it. So with, with the camera, um, uh, that basically what the camera is offering is the field of view. So the amount that you're seeing, then it's like, the aspect ratio, which you pretty much always want to be the width and height. So window dot inner width and win over window dot inner height. Um, then it's near and far. So how far you see this way and how far you see that way. So if you want to adjust how much people can see, those are things that you can kind of play with later on down the line. Um, I'm also going to set the camera position uh, back a little bit. I always do. Okay. Um, it, and so to, to kind of, so I'm, I'm, I struggle with this a little bit as like an abstract thing. So what we're saying is basically like, if we, if we picture that what we're drawing is going to be like a box, right? What we're designing right now is like, if the box is here, we need a camera and then look at the we box. can like zoom the camera in and out or like pan it around or all like make the angle wider, or narrower. That's right. And Got, for okay. that camera position, basically everything that we're creating will allow you to change its position, which is really fun because that means you can animate the camera's position. You can make the camera go around yeah. or you can like, like lights have positions too. You can like move lights around. Usually people are moving the objects, but you can play around with a lot more stuff. So this and like get uh, I want you to get used to like X. Y, so it's X, Y, and Z, right? So, because we have those dimensions. So the camera position Z is like controlling whether it's backwards or forwards in space. Gotcha. Makes sense. Cool. So then we're going to add those controls, those trackpad controls that we had earlier. Um, so we're going to say controls equals new and you can see we're like we're like instantiating these things all the same way right we're going to go track all it's always like this pascal cased thing so it if it looks like it's a lot to remember at first just keep in mind that it's usually just like new three dot and then something that's pascal cased so um we're gonna say we're gonna pass the camera into the controls and we're gonna say controls dot add event listener 
change. And then we're going to say render, and that's going to give us an error because we haven't done the render yet. So I'm going to comment this out for just now until we build the and, render. And render is going to be a function. Yes, render okay. will be a function, exactly. And then we've got this scene. And then this is a really important part. So we're creating a scene in which to put everything. Like, basically, you're setting up like what if you think about what you need to like make a dramatic action in movies, we have all of those things. We have like basically like this the renderer, we have like the camera, we're gonna have like the scene that everything's laid out in, and then we've got the things that are attached. So everything kind of gets attached to the things before it. Um, yeah. Yeah, L um, Lori in the chat was just making a joke that she says the next time she's doing one of these, she's going to say she's directing a movie, um, which yeah. feels pretty, that feels pretty accurate with what we're doing so far. Yeah. Oh, and, and now lights. Light, <laughs> camera action, you know. Um, so I'm going to add light one. I always call it like light one, light two, light three. You don't have to call them that. You can call them dancing tango monkey lights if you want to. Um, <laughs> um, but like uh, there, there's basically you pretty much always want an ambient light because that's like the light that's on in your bedroom right mm -hmm. and so i'm gonna just add like a kind of normal one two three four five fff thing and then maybe i'll give it like a little bit of softness by adding 0.5 which means that i'm gonna do it like half light basically um but i could just pass the color in and that would be fine too that's an optional parameter um, so, and then light two, I'll show you how the optional parameter works. So like new three dot, um, directional light. There's also point light. There's like a bunch of different lights you can use. And I'm going to do again, like another zero X F F F F F F. And I'm just going to pass that in, right? Like no optional, like nothing else. Okay. And then and the, the yeah. optional parameter, you said that was for intensity. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So like opacity or something. Opacity. Okay. Yeah. Um, so light two, I'm going to do that position thing again, because that one um, is the one uh, that's like very, very directional. Like the ambient light doesn't really matter where it is. It's like all over the place. And then the light two is like very, very directional. Um, that position, we have X, Y, and Z. I'm just gonna set it to one, one, one for now, but Jason can play with it later and move the light around as he sees fit. So okay. I'm gonna just like set the stage for him to do some playing. Um, and then we gotta add it to the scene, right? So we got a scene add light one and scene dot add light two. Cool. Um, then we're gonna add a listener for Windows resize. So I'll do like window resize. And we're going to say window.add event listener resize event will call a on window resize function that we haven't made yet. And we're going to say false. I'm not going to comment it out for now because we're going to make that like right now. Okay. So um, so let's do like function on window resize. And this is so that if the user resizes their window, it doesn't like get all wonky because mm. otherwise it will like every, all of the shapes will go like, wah, um, which is a technical term. Um, <laughs> 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 so we want the aspect ratio to be the same like we did before where uh, it's width over height. Uh, camera dot update projection matrix projection matrix. Uh, so that's just like calling a function that, or it's a, a method that allows us to do that. And then we're going to say renderer dot set size, and we're going to say width and height again. It's usually like X and Y for a lot of these things, and then mm -hmm. optional parameter of Z for a lot of stuff. So if you remember X, Y, Z, um, that's kind of easy to remember. And then we get go controls dot hand, the controls understand how to handle resize as long as you tell them to. So we're gonna do that. Um, then we're gonna go back up top to where that init function is. 
and we're going to add a render function, which we're going to create. Actually, let's make the render function first. That's probably better. Um, so let's go down back on top of the on window resize, and we're going to do function render. And we're going to say render dot render, and we're going to render the scene and the camera. So you can start to see why we put those kind of in more global scope so that we can access them through all of these different functions. Um, we're also gonna have to set up an animation um, because every time we, um, we create something, we're gonna animate it um, because we have to kind of create this render loop. So mm -hmm. the, re the animate is going to use request animation frame request animation frame and then we're going to pass in animate because it's a re recursive function okay and we're going to controls dot update so the controls are also going to update so now that we have the render we can uncomment up here controls. okay right there cool okay looking good now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to call after the init at the top we're almost done doing this stuff, right? We're gonna call animate before we call render. Okay. All right, so, so far we actually, now we actually have a scene. I know you don't see anything yet, but we're about to put something into the scene. So this is all the setup. I will put together a gist for everybody of like all of the setup stuff and kind of boilerplate -y stuff so that you don't have to like rewrite it every time. But I think it's a good to like see people walk through it so that you can learn a bit about why we're doing all of those things so that you're, yeah. if you did want to change the field of view or you do want to change the position of the camera, that that is all like stuff that's possible for you, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so, so a few people have I'm... noticed my, my Drasnerd shirt, which oh, I am. No. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't not wear it for this episode. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta like, find a way to get back at Dizzy for this. My husband made these Drasnerd shirts and I hate him now. No, I'm just kidding. I love him. But, it um... makes me so happy. I love the way that you two tease each other on Twitter. It is like uh... one of my, it's like my favorite, uh, wait, wait, like my favorite sitcom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He, uh, he really got me good with that one. I haven't found a way of repaying him quite yet. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Estelle also did this thing where she like for Perf Matters, she like had stickers printed of my face, which is like really weird looking because it doesn't even really look like me. It's like I'm like this. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and my stepkids like put them everywhere, all over the house, and like drew on them and stuff. <laughs> like, I'm so mad at her. Oh, I love that. Um, um is that you that has everything selected or is, is somebody? I think that's you. No, nah, it looks like, okay. So whoever has uh, it, who manually typed out that URL to join us, if you could deselect everything. So it's, yeah, thank you very much. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a little, a little distracting. Um, um, also, it's a little scary. You're like, delete. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, please be nice, everybody. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's a lot of work to undo it if you silly hackers get in here and mess with us. Um, <laughs> Okay, so we have all the boilerplate that we need to do a thing, right? Um, right? So at this point, we have kind of we've kind of like laid things out, but we're not doing anything yet. So I would need to create some kind of shape or something. Or are we are we have we entered the part of the program where I start flailing around? Um, I'm gonna give you a shape to start flailing around with, and then Appreciate we're gonna make, and then we're gonna make other things happen after that. Dun, dun, dun. Other things. <laughs> Very like vague here. Um, okay. So in, we added the add shapes and again, like you don't have to structure your code like this. I'm just keeping it like kind of, I keep it to like what it's doing in smaller functions to kind of see where I'm at and stuff. Um, so, okay, great. So I'm going to say let, so the first thing that we have to do is create some geometry. And this is definitely a part where you can flail around. So um, three dot box geometry. 
and it takes three parameters x you know x y <laughs> it's basically the width the height and the depth so right. we've got i'm just going to say 10 10 10 to kick us off um and then the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to need a material now and we have, it helps to spell it right <laughs> material um new three dot and i could start with mesh normal actually i'll start with mesh normal material and then we'll move to other things okay and can you um, talk a little bit about what that means yeah so the material is what the box is kind of covered by so we created a box it's 10 10 10 and then we're going to cover it with material and the material can be like any number of things so it can there's some like things that you can get out of the box they all um kind of respond to light differently they all have different parameters that do different reflectivity mm. uh you can even apply textures like you might have seen things covered in bricks and stuff like that um, we're not going to get too into all of those things but that's super available to you also you can do things like create a shader and attach it to the material so okay. if you want to get into like crazy like spikes coming out everywhere fog appearing <laughs> all of that stuff shaders are really pretty they're pretty tough um <laughs> uh, but we did they are really fun for, for anybody who's interested in that you can go and look at the the stream that i did with paul henschel because we got into fog a little bit um so that would be a way to to kind of see how all of that worked um yeah well the i I think one thing that you should note in that is that that's very abstracted. And if you wanted to get into like real shader shader, there's a thing oh. called book of shaders that actually tells you what shaders are and do. Um, because what, what he showed in there was super great because you could spin it up super fast. But if you want to make something like super, like way detailed and like really you know, mess around with them. Wow. Those obstructions are eventually going to fail you. But the book of shaders really walks through what every single piece is. And it's, there's a lot, but like it also has stuff that you can manipulate in there. Um, uh, and so you can like play around with the stuff that's in the shaders as well. So it's not just the thing. They're like examples that you can Yeah. So I would say like, with Paul's thing, if you want to spin something up super fast in React, that's so awesome. And he did, he does such a great job with that. If you want to create something that you have like a really strong idea, like I want to make zigzags in shaders that then create this and this and this, that's probably where you want to go. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Very cool. Yeah. So, um, and, and that's, I think something interesting is like there's a, there's such a big discussion around this in general, but the idea of like abstractions, right? Like abstractions let you go fast, but you have to accept people's opinions. Um, when you want to get custom, you have to go below the abstraction. And the more you know about what happens underneath your abstractions, the easier it is to do that stuff quickly. Um, yeah. And if, so if you want to do something like super particular, then yeah, then that's a good place to go. Awesome. Um, there's also like these playing cards that I'll hook up the link later that I got that like the the card shows the shader and then the back of the card shows like what the shader is. Oh, that's, that's super cool. And they're, they're really beautiful. They're really awesome. I don't know if you know Shirley, <laughs> but she like introduced me to them. Um, I, so I just met you... Shirley Wu and she was excellent. We are talking about doing some generative uh, data visualization art on this show. Oh, uh, cool. Yeah, she does 3JS stuff too. So you could definitely do stuff with her as well. Um, she's amazing at everything in the world. <laughs> um, <laughs> she's just infallible human. Um, I'm, I'm like, a, right, yeah, I'm a I'll take that. Big, I'm, a, I'm a big Shirley fan. Um, so, and she has a stream too. Um, so she's, she's good at this kind of like live coding stuff. So I'm just doing a random color for now and we can, that's another thing that Jason is going to play with. I'm going to show him how to make general generative colors. Mm. Um, and we're going to do let mesh is new three, but you, I mean, you can kind of see the pattern here, right? New three dot mesh. And then we're going to put that geometry and material inside the, the mesh. So basically the mesh allows us to like surface the materials and um, like the geometry and the material aren't necessarily connected until the mesh brings them together. 
right? So, so then, yeah. So if we think about it, like the geometry, when you create the geometry, the, the, the shape then exists, but it's kind of like transparent. It's a, it's like an abstract thing. And then the material is a surface, but it's not, a, it's not a thing yet. So you actually have to like combine them together to get an actual shape with the material on it kind of thing. Totally. And, um, yeah. So, and then that mesh can be animated too. So you can take that mesh then and like move it around and move ah, all in. Okay. Yeah. Um, so then we can say scene dot add, and then we pass in the mesh and then we add it to the scene and this should give us a shape. No. Okay. Let me look in the console real quick. I have this, um, code open thing that um, allows me to look into another window. What are you doing, um, computer? Into, like, Why? Why are you like oh, this? It, I guess it doesn't work for collab mode. Um, let me see. What it did didn't I do? like, uh, it says w dot add event listener. Did we do a w dot add event listener somewhere? Yeah, at the bottom, let's see, in the on right window resize. Do, 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 render animate. Because we got one on the window resize, but that looks like window exists. Did I spell something wrong? I don't know. On window resize. Um, hmm. Would it be the controls maybe? Like the controls dot add event listener? I... I don't think so. Controls. I wonder Change. if we. Oh wait, did I not add it to that? Oh, it's commented out. That well, actually, I just commented out to see if it would refresh, oh. but yeah, oh, okay. it it didn't it didn't um, change anything. Let me see if I can do like. Um, maybe it's something with the. It's not liking the window here. Under under width. Um, yeah, it still doesn't like that one. Okay. Three dot trackball controls is not a constructor. Oh, interesting. Is it singular, maybe? Oh, uh, is it singular? Let's try it. Maybe I remembered it wrong. Where where did I even write that? Uh, line thirty eight. <laughs> Uh, I think it's not singular, but we could try it. Okay. Let me see if... Controls there's is a, declared. There's a suggestion that do you need... Um, Oh yeah, there are a few. Is so when you import the trackball controls, does that get added to the three object, or is it, since it was a separate library? Yeah, it it does. Okay. Because we're adding it basically to the camera. Whoa. <laughs> Camera dot update projection matrix. So the it, are we getting three dash trackball controls? Is that the package? Yeah, let me see if I brought that in incorrectly. Because in the the usage example, it shows you get three, but then trackball controls is a separate import that's outside of the yeah, three. Yeah, 
I, I brought that in already. Let me make sure it's the right link. Yeah, that looks good. Two, two, two. Try to refresh. Why is it not a constructor? It's weird. Can I try something? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Because the, the setup docs. Oh, wait, something just worked, but then it stopped working. I saw a box for like a hot second. Okay, so now it's, wait, now it's showing up. Oh, weird. It's what the happened? same as before, though. <laughs> Holy oh. buckets, did that just work? Okay, so now if you spin it around and stuff, you can see the box. I don't know why. I don't know how we fixed that. That's kind of a non-deterministic error. Sometimes <laughs> uh, you just have to look at it long enough. You turn it on <laughs> again and off again. <laughs> um, oh, it was yeah. the lowercase b in trackball. Oh, uh, did I write uh, an uppercase b? Because I'm, I'm all like Campbell. Or I'm like Pascal case everything. Um, <laughs> okay, so again... Helps to spell things correctly. Who who fixed that B <laughs> for us? Um, yeah, that uh, that was that was helpful. So okay, cool. So all right, but now we've we do have a we've got a thing and it's doing stuff and I'm I am able to like scroll up and down and it's zooming in and out, which is very cool that that just like works and that's what this yeah. trackball controls does, right? Yeah, so you can zoom in, zoom out, uh, pan around, things like that. Oh, whoa, um, so whoa, look at that. <laughs> I didn't even know that was going to happen. That's cool. <laughs> um, so what we can do now is change the, the material. So let's try to, to do that and pass in. Like, I'll have you do that part. So like, you go to the add shapes. Add let's shapes is up here. To mesh Lambert material um, instead of normal material, and don't capitalize the B. <laughs> Lambert material, like like that. Lambert, yeah. So then that should change it to a pink square. Mm -hmm. instead. Um, okay. So now to have like a little bit of more fun, let's like you see how there's like a directional light here. So we mentioned that you can change the position of the light and make it move around. So let's go down to where the light is. And uh, on line 48, you see light position set. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and play with those numbers. So like X and Y and uh, X and Y. So it's like X and Y and Y and depth, right? And then is there so kind of a, a range? Like you go zero to 100 on this? Do you go... Yeah, so your range will be that field of view that we looked at in the camera. So it's 1 to 1,000. 1 to 1,000. So if, if I set it like at 1,000. <laughs> then I think it's going to. Oh, it's like no. all the way to the right. So we can yeah, see yeah, that yeah. like just that right hand side has a thing. Yeah. So if I set it to like 200. It's still going to be like that, right? Because it's oh, not anywhere else in space. Like it's maybe a little less or more strong, but like you probably want to like set it around to different spots. Like, um, uh, they, see uh, now it's at the top. Yeah, yeah. So now you can try the Z and it will illuminate. Okay. And so out. then if I pull it like further out in front and maybe like a little bit here. then we get some, yeah. it's a little more dynamic looking. Okay, so that's very cool. Yeah, so that's one thing that we can you can kind of play with and like make different all the time. Another thing that we're gonna do is I'm gonna make, actually, do you know how to make random helper functions? Maybe you can do that part or I can walk you through it. You random know? helper, like just building a random number? Yeah. Sure, I can. I can probably figure that out. Oh. Okay, so at the bottom of the file, we're going to make a little section called helpers. Uh, just like an object? Yeah, we're going to do a function. Okay, so... so we're going to do a function with two parameters. And it's going to be min and max. Okay. And then in that, you know, kind of uh, 
or actually instead of calling it helpers, probably like I, I usually use like totes rando, but that's kind of long. Oh, I see. I understand. <laughs> uh, so, you were you meant so like you this. Do, yeah, yeah. So you can, we can do go totes like, rando. Let's uh, okay. let's I mean, let's uh, let's like live up to the legend here. <laughs> <laughs> My stepdad's name is actually rando. <laughs> so we're gonna return a math.random uh, which is a function or method rather random and then we want and then uh, at the end of that we want to multiply it by in parens max minus min and then plus min. And what this, this is a really handy one. This is like, basically will return a number between, a random number between the, the minimum number and the maximum number. And so that uh, is something that we're gonna use up top. So like maybe we want to make a bunch of boxes. Mm -hmm. Does that sound fun? Or do you, I, do you wanna try like other shapes real quick before we move on to grids and things? Sure. Uh... I mean, I'm I'm kind of down for either. Uh, what do you think, chat? Should we do shapes or multiply random, multiple randomly generated boxes? Shapes. Let's do shapes. Shapes. Okay. So if we go to the three JS docs, three JS docs, and then scroll down a little bit on the side. And you can go past the animation stuff, past that into um, there. Wait, yeah, go oh. uh, geometries. Yeah, no, no. You, oh, you geometries. Got it. Geometries. So we can go through any one of these and do cones or cylinders or dodecahedrons. So go ahead. And yeah, let's do a dodecahedron because I yeah. heard that word once when I was in math and then I never did it again. Yeah, so now you can like, if you look at the drop down, you can actually change it around and stuff. You can see which parameters you have to work with and like the radius and the detail. Whoa, look at that. That's wild. Yeah. Okay, so cool. Scroll down and the, on the, in that window, it will give you the code. So you've got, does it not give you the code for this? Okay, well, anyway, the Dodec, do, the dodecahedron geometry passes in that float and the detail, right? Like you, you saw the radius. And yeah. The detail. So and the we can, play, so you can maybe even like pick one from above and all of the shapes that they have, they have these kind of little box like ways to play with them. Okay. Um, so if you, if you wanted to make a new shape, now you know how to do that, right? You can go to the docs, you can go to this section and you can see like what, kind of parameters you have to work with and you copy them into that constructor and then you can make different shapes. Wow, this is, yeah. That makes things so like, it's way less uh, intimidating when you can just start like pulling on knobs, right? Like that's the, oh, totally. the yeah, that makes, that makes this way more approachable because it's like, oh, okay, I just want this to look cool. And I can click around to each of these until I find one that kind of looks like what I want. Twist these knobs until one of them looks the way that I want it to look. Yeah. And then you still have to like remember which ones go into which parameters and stuff. But it's sure. really fun. And then, um, I mean, basically, like when you go to this, the site I showed you earlier, the Sarah.dev one, um, I, you know, first Jason asked me to show how to break things apart. That's a little bit more complicated. We're not going to do that in this <laughs> amount of time. Um, but you know, those, that shape I created by creating the shape. So you can, you can actually start to understand how that was made. Right. First of all, I took a shape. Mm -hmm. I spun up a bunch of the different shapes. I, you know, added them to a group, which was added to them. Like I, each one of them has a mesh. Right. And then I have like a shader, that shades each of the sides. But that shape itself was something that I made by taking a shape and adjusting the knobs until I found like this like configuration that kind of looked like a rose. Yeah. So I kind of sp spun those up with a for loop and like tossed them around with a random function with some like cosines and things. 
Um, in the background, instead of setting a clear color, there's a way of setting a transparency for a canvas. And I added a image to the back of it. So like that oh. background is like an image. I took the shapes, I spun them using their meshes. I added a shader to all of the sides. So you can start to like understand how that was built. Yeah, you kind of you just build up in steps. So yeah, yeah I mean that's so let's uh let's let's play with this. Let's add a new yeah. Yeah. thing. I'm gonna add um let's add a I guess I'll just do like a geo two. Yeah, it's important to um not make it the same one. And it was radius, so we'll, it was ten and then the detail I think it's set to like one and then I never write code like this. This is all, this is like a very interesting, I, I never do the the list style let, so I'm like, my brain doesn't want to do it. Um, I mean, you can write it however you want to. You don't have to write it like I do. And then what's another material? Maybe I can go in here and look and play with another material. So, ooh, what's that one? That one's Ish. a little bit more complicated. To, or we could still do it, but. Maybe uh, what's what's one that uh, is not super complicated, but maybe looks a little different. Um, tune. 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 Fun. Oh, cool. Okay, yeah, this works. So I have the tune material, and that gives me a color, a map. Well, that's fascinating. I assume I don't have that brick, so I'd have to. Do yeah, you can. There. I mean, you can always go to the for all of these. They have like a little edit button. You can go into another window and see how it was made. But like, um, and like steal their bricks or whatever. Okay. <laughs> Open source bricks. Um, cool. Okay. So then I'm gonna use the mesh tune material. And mesh tune material, and I'll just set a color of. Um, let's use Rebecca purple. Oh, so we would need to add code. Nice. Okay. Is I think right? is there are there more are those all optional? Go back, go down to the docs. Um, Great question. Parameters. Defaults, defaults, defaults. Okay. Am I? Okay. I think we're good. Yeah, everything is optional, so I think okay. we can just okay. throw in the. Yeah, just just making sure. Okay. So then I'm gonna do a mesh two, and I need to make this material two. Um, and that will be a new three dot mesh with geo two and material two. And then we'll add it. Okay. Um, and then one other thing that you might wanna do is move it in a position because it's going to be on top of the other one. Um, so because it will be in like the same spot. OK. Or, or yeah, you could call the other one out. For Did me. I break this? Oh, yeah, because you did three. Um, oh. It's got to be uppercase. Yeah. There we go. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Okay. So now you can, you, we, not only did we make a dodecahedron, but we gave it like a crazy weird shader stuff. And it, yeah, I've, I've made my very own lumpy Mark. ball. Yeah. Holy buckets, did that just work? <laughs> lumpy ball okay. for the win. Okay. So now let's make like a city. Yes. Let's do that. <laughs> Um, so let's, do you mind if we get rid of your lumpy ball or comment oh, it out? Oh, my lumpy ball. We'll just comment it out. We'll comment it out. And then it can live, live on. <laughs> okay. Cool. Um. <laughs> so great. Now let's, um, there, there's a reason why I separated the geometry material and the mesh. And that reason is because I wanted to uh, set up a grid and I don't want them to be attached. So cool. um, let's create a two dimensional array. So we're going to make a for loop that's like I and a for loop that's like J that's nested inside of it. Okay. And then we'll just use a consistent number for each two as the length. Um, so we can kind of oh, store no. that 
Le, uh, I don't remember how to write for loops. Le, oh, okay. Let okay. I <laughs> equals zero. And then, then I have to set what it does. Wow. And so it's going to increment. Nope. No. First, you got to, uh, I is less than num. And I'll do num above while you do that. We'll teamwork. And then we increment. Teamwork. That's right. It's mm -hmm. initial condition and then like action. That's wow. right. I, wow, I can't believe it's been a really long time since I've written a for loop. <laughs> and, then and then you then wanted we, me to do a nested for loop? Yeah. So do another one of those, but with J instead. Okay. And don't use I for the J one, or you will cause an infinite loop, which I did just the other day. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, like sometimes the like warnings I have in workshops are like, people are like, I would never do that. I'm like, um, <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay. So we're setting up. Um, oh, and then that's why we wrote the totes rando function. Uh, no. Yeah, we are going to use that in just a second. But first, okay. let's put the mesh and the scene inside inside here. Okay. If that Great. So now we're making a bunch of them. <laughs> okay. And now we're gonna change the mesh position. So I'm gonna I'm gonna kick it off with giving you a distance. So we're gonna make the distance between them. Distance is like I don't know. Let's just start with thirty for now, and then inside here, we're gonna I'm gonna have you do the mesh dot position. Okay. So we're gonna do mesh dot position dot x equals the distance because we're going the distance to... <laughs> sorry <laughs> can't help myself <laughs> and then we're gonna do the <laughs> we're gonna do the distance times the i and then we're gonna do it again for um, the y the, Actually, let's do Z so that we can do it this way. Because Z is depth, right? We don't, uh, We could do it this way, but then it's like flat against the wall. We kind of want to do Z and then do that. All right. Whoa. Oh, now we're like Whoa. Snapping. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> OK, that's amazing. All right, okay, that was so cool. much easier than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> <laughs> Holy buckets, did that just work? so now what we can do is we can like change things up like the height and the um and the material color and stuff too right so like let's go take the um let's leave the num and the distance outside and then bring the material geometry and material inside as well okay so i'm taking these out yeah. here and we're going to Set these up. Yeah. Cool. Um, okay. Great. Perfect. Um, now, yeah, that's great. OK, so now we maybe we want boxes of different sizes, yeah? Yes. OK, so let's do, that would be which one, Jason? Well, we, uh, so this is the width, height, and depth of our box, so x, y, z. So we would want to play with this, right? Yes. So we would want the second one. Oh, sorry. You were asking me for a specific dimension. And I was like, I know how things work. <laughs> 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 OK. Um, all right. So I want to do then totes rando. <laughs> and we want to pick a size between we had, what, 10? So let's say between like 5 and 15, maybe. 15. Yeah, maybe we want to go higher if we're going to make a city. Oh, yeah, we do want to make a city, huh? So let's, what do you think, like 25 and 75? Sure, let's do it. 25 and 75. Whoa. Okay, so things are happening. I notice that they are vertically centered. That's true. We, we, we can work on that in a second, but before we do that, let's do some other things. I'm going to, how about we make many, many of them, and how about we also... Tighten them up. Does that sound good? Yeah. So let's do maybe 20. Is that? Sure. We'll start there so that it's not. Um, 
Let's also give it ourselves an offset. Oh, so that that's we're not too many. Right in the middle of them. Oh, no, no, no. That's good. That's good. Okay. But like maybe we, for here, we want to make an offset and do like, um, we kind of want to give ourselves some space. So let's see, we're in the middle of, how big is it? Let's uh, do an offset of like 200 or something, and then we'll add it to the X. Of here? Of, yeah, so we're just going to add that to, oh, not there. Sorry, I'm not being clear. Um, we go down here. And we oh, add. oh, I get you. Sorry. Yeah. So we're going to offset it from us, but we could also have the camera change or something like that as well, right? Maybe yeah. Too far. Did I do Maybe something? Do no, no, I think you're fine. I just did it too far away. Okay. There we go. I think maybe um, we do need to move the camera because it's like we're like zoomed all the way into the side. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. Let's move. Let's move this thing first, and then we'll move the camera after. How about we do okay. plus offset for both, and make it a little bit more, like maybe thirty. We're still kind of weirdly placed. Maybe for the Z, we go up way, way higher. I can't remember if it's the, is it a hundred? Yeah. Would we, do we want to, I think we want to subtract it. Yeah. Well, it goes weird sometimes. Um, yeah. So let's, let's try subtracted. Maybe even a little bit more like 400. Yeah. That's, a, that's a little too much. 300. That looks, yeah, that looks a little closer. And if, because yeah. once we, Maybe uh, that gets weird. Because now it's on like a, the the rotation basis is, is interesting. Yeah. So maybe we put ourselves back to the offset and do go a little bit high. So the way we're going to go high is with the camera instead of offset, keeping doing offsets and stuff. So let's go okay. down to the camera. Um, and we've got the camera position Z at 100. Maybe we want to do a camera position Y negative something. Okay. Try negative 100? Yeah, might as well try it. Okay, Ooh. no, this is what I was talking about. Okay, I think it's the camera's position that is the opposite. I always get screwed up. Like, well, I know I know that one of them is the opposite of what I think it is. Um, so yeah, that's maybe a little high. So let's go to maybe 50 or something. That looks cool. And yeah, then maybe cool. like the, um, the X, we could do like a negative 50 because then it will move everything to the left. That was not what I wanted at all. <laughs> I think maybe we should get rid of one of the offset. I think rather than offsetting both, we should just offset one of them. There yeah. we go. That looks there okay. Go. That looks city ish. Yeah. Great. So let me, I'm going to, I'm reloading mine because mine is out of date, I think. Um, okay, so now let's make the colors randomized too. How's that sound? I'm into it. You're so into it. we have. So here's our color. We could make random hex colors, but I find those a little bit hard to work with. So maybe we can use um, HSL instead. What do you think? I yeah, I'm only passingly familiar with HSL, but the more I use it, the more I like it. Okay, great. That is it. Awesome. Um, HSL is real. So the first thing we have to do, because it doesn't really like <laughs> HSL, so we have to define it as a new color kind of thing. Okay. Um, so we can basically say three. Um, oh, who's that? You, uh, whoever whoever is got... highlighting everything else, can you please stop? <laughs> Hello, please stop. Uh, highlighting. Thank, thank you. you. Stop my anxiety. <laughs> dot color and then we can add it pass in i'm going to do um i'm going to first write it in just back to, i'm writing it in back to as a template literal 
um, but like, let's say it's 110% or like 100%, ah, 50%. So what I like about HSL is that it's very forgiving. What you have is a hue on a circle, right? It's like a 360 dimension. And then saturation, which goes from 0% to 100%. And then lightness, which goes from 0% to 100%. And that's super easy to like think about, right? Because this is pretty bright. We're at saturation. Like this color is like very, very saturated. Right, yeah. Maybe we want to, for a city, we want to tone down the saturation a little bit, right? Because um, we might want it to be like a little bit less, like cities aren't usually bright pink. <laughs> so maybe we go down to like 50 or something like that at first. But the other thing we can do is HSL is really, um, uh, not only is it very easy to work with because you're going on that circle of Q rotation, but also it's very forgiving because a circle is a circle, you can't ever fail. So if you go outside of the bounds of the circle, it totally doesn't matter because it's still gonna be a, a number. So in here we can actually use a template literal. If you're not familiar with template literals, they kind of look like this. Um, and we can pass in that totes rando. Um, and I'll let Jason do whatever he wants. And for for Hugh, is it is it on a 360 grid or a, or a 360? Yeah, on... Okay, so, so we can... probably want to pick like some colors that are just like near each other. And... So we'd probably set like maybe 30 point range. That would put him pretty close. Yeah, sure. Okay, so let's, I don't know where the wheel is, so I'm gonna go at random and just say yep. 180 to 210. Sounds good. Okay, so this so doesn't we, wanna do what I- So now we gotta add the color to the color. Oh, oh wait, so I broke it. That's my. Okay, so we've we've created a color, and now the color is is actually valid. I had accidentally deleted the leading parentheses. It looked like. Um, no worries, I might and, have typed it wrong too. And now we want to add that color, and we can do we just do it straight up like so? Yeah, color is color. No, uh, well, yeah. Cool. That's it works. Yeah, so you can like... Okay, and then for everybody watching, we are going to make this available, so there's no need to... You don't have to copy-paste it or anything now. It'll all be shared shortly after this goes live. Um, so this is amazing. Like, we've done some really cool stuff here uh, with our yeah, so, our random thing. So let's um, let's So maybe we should change the bit. background to be one of the colors that we just had. Um, okay. So like, why... What I do is I use this color picker. I don't know if you have that in your browser. Um, basically, I I'm going to open it up. I have a color do... picker. OK. I'm going to go into, let me... actually, let me leave run. OK, cool. Um, if I go into my browser and go get one of the colors, no. I know that you can't see what I'm doing. Like <laughs> We're all watching, watching with bated breath. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> here we go. Uh, leave. And can whoever's in the code pen please uh, deselect? Uh, so. And what the color picker allows me to do is pick a color randomly from my screen, um, which is really useful for things like this. Did I mess it up? Um, okay, I did. All right. Go. Okay. So I'm going to go with the color picker and pick one of the colors that's the, one of the furthest blocks away, just like a kind of grayed out tone. And then I'm going to apply it here, where did I go? Um, you see where it's on line 42, where it's render or clear color, and I set the one, 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 one. Yes. So I'm going to put one of those colors here. OK. And oh. It kind of goes back in space. And now we can also, like, now that we started to have a city, let's just 
really do it up. I'm going to put the numb to like 100. And it's going to choke a little bit. And I apologize in advance. But then if we look, if we set wow. ourselves correctly, we can have a gigantic <laughs> thing. So maybe what we want to do is go like, you know, <laughs> and you can see that field of view, like, right? Like you can see where it disappears. Yeah. So you, if we set the camera correctly, <laughs> um, which we can totally do, it will, you can con control where that end of space is. So maybe what we want to do is go back in space or whatever on the, um, on the camera position. So I'm going to do the camera like, position. Do uh, camera position. Z is negative 100. Let's see, if, mm, that's too far. So maybe I'll do uh, someone's in front of my cursor. 60, I don't. I don't. Uh, okay, rerun it. Well, you can kind of see, like, you can play around until you're at the point of view of the scene and right. getting that you want so maybe i'll set it back for now oh man my browser is just choking on the yeah th this is quite a lot of stuff so <laughs> i i might i might weird. bump it back just because it's getting pretty weird yeah yeah that's totally fine i'm gonna take it back to like 30. okay okay that's a little more that's a little more manageable it's not uh oh no yeah we can we can handle that um but it's still like that's a that's a hefty city yeah, so if you place yourself appropriately in the scene and you can also make the field of view kind of like tighter if you wanted to, mm -hmm. then you can see how you can make a city scene. And like, let's say you're setting this up appropriately and you're making sure that there's not like, you can set it up so that as you pan through, you're like dumping the blocks behind you and adding blocks in front of you. And yeah. that's all kind of like, Holy just JavaScript that just things, works. right? Like they, those aren't like crazy design things. Those are mm -hmm. just literally understanding how to work with JavaScript. So you could also do recursive functions that build trees and things. You can also yeah. do, you know, stuff like this. And there's all sorts of like shaders and, you know, we could use shaders to make them look like real city buildings and things mm -hmm. like that here and add fog. And yeah. And so um, there was a request that I think we should do. Let's bring Lumpy Ball back and make it our son. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's <laughs> let's make a Lumpy Ball city. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll make it um, yellow, which is what green and blue. So does it need to be uppercase? No, it can okay. be either. And then I need to position it which I will do by looking at its position. So mesh dot position dot Y, we want it to be a uh, positive number will take it above the city. Yes. Okay, so let's maybe make it like 150. And oh no, uh, not for this one. This one needs negative. I think I got confused because the camera needs the other one. Ah. Where are you at, lumpy ball? <laughs> the lumpy ball is turning into a what's going on with that oh. what's the oh it's because you got mesh position oh oh mesh. you need so, mesh too yeah that would explain so much lumpy There's ball our... okay but so it does need to okay, be positive no, this, this is the positive yeah okay that's why i was confused all right. But I did get my, oh, I'm just bad at hex values, I think. This is why I prefer HSLA. There we go. And now yeah. we have a lumpy ball son. Yeah. Hooray! Oh, <laughs> okay. And you can, you can add things to a group. Like if you wanted to make like, somebody said lumpy ball emoji, you could do like a lumpy ball and do like flat, plain circles and stuff, add them to a group, add that to a mesh, and then move those around all together. So you could totally make like an emoji head if you wanted to. Oh, that would be amazing. Um, yeah, so this is, I mean, this is super fun. Like I, and I feel like this, 
is starting to feel like if I was trying to build a game, um, like I, I would imagine that this would be super hard. Like, oh, look at all this work to go in and create all these different shapes and, you know, make my city layout. But you're literally just saying, yeah, make a box and then throw this on. And then we could randomize the colors. We can randomize the heights. And then if we wanted to, we could randomize, um, I assume, the the pattern. So like sometimes they would be brick and sometimes they would be concrete. And uh, we can just load those in like we saw in the docs, right? Um, yeah. Totally. And also, was... um, uh, aside from like the shaders and those kind of like there's the built in materials and the shaders, um, you can also do things like um, right now we're using math.random, which isn't, it's very random, right? Uh, but there's also other kinds of noise calculations, like there's simplex noise and there's Perlin noise and there's like whole histories of how people invented them. But you don't need to know all that. There are JavaScript libraries where you can literally use the library, pass in a value, and it will create the Perlin noise for you. So if you didn't want to do math.random and you wanted it to like undulate a little bit more or mm. like spiral a little bit more, you can go look up uh, JavaScript noise libraries and they can you can have a little bit more fine control over them. Oh, that's so cool. That's, uh, that's amazing. So... I, now I want to go do that. I want to build like a spiral city. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, all you really need is JavaScript and a little bit of randomness and, and there you go. Yeah. So that, I mean, that's that's really amazing. And and so I was just looking at this physical material here in this uh, this like brick pattern. Um, and this is all it would take is is adding one of these bricks. So there are about like 13 minutes left in the normal time that we would take. Is that long enough if we wanted to add one um, one map. I actually have to go to a meeting. No, that's totally fine. Okay. <laughs> In that case, we will call um, this a stopping point. Um, um, but I do have some, um, demos out there that show, like, I will take a circle, for instance, apply a spherical, um, like, um, texture to it. That's a city put the camera in the middle and then pan around. So you're like looking around a city. And there's some of those examples in the three JS examples as well. But I have, if you go to like, um, if you go back to my code pen. Yes. And then go to pen, uh, all pens. And then there's this one that's all white. Yeah, go to the one that's all white. Here? Um, no, oh, not, sorry, not that one. The, yeah, that playing with sound in three JS. And if you click on the start button, if you sound on. Whoa. So turn the sound up. Can you hear it? No. Yeah. Um, so like the sound, like if you listen to it with the sound, basically what I'm doing is I'm taking this um, shape that has a shader and I'm breaking it apart in combination with the audio and this pen is very, very heavily commented um, Holy buckets. because Did just in just case work? people want to like learn how to do it. So you can learn how to connect audio to things in 3JS. You can basically just take that pen and like fork it or whatever and connect audio to certain Yeah. Things. Wow. That is super cool. Um, and so like, yeah, this is like, I'm just very impressed by this. Um, the, the audio visualization is actually something that I have been thinking about and I, I want to do an episode where we where we play with it um so this could be a great starting point like maybe we'll just come and, and reverse engineer what you've done <laughs> yeah. it's totally open to playing around with and if you have any questions you can ask me and Super i'll cool. um i'll send the gist with like the just the boilerplate for setting up an initial thing for everybody um i'll give that you the gist to you so you, you can use it in the show notes Perfect. All right. Well, I know you've got to jump. So where should people go to learn more about you or to check? What should they do next? <laughs> uh, play with 3JS. Um, my, I have a lot of code pens that are all sorts of random stuff. Um, I'm on Twitter at Sarah Edo, um, Sarah underscore Edo. Um, but yeah, if you want to make and break code pens, I have lots of collections too of other people's work. So like tons of stuff that I think is really interesting. Um, and uh is really fun so there's like one called fun times that's like a lot of canvasy stuff um and like weird 
stuff that uh, is definitely good reverse engineer fodder uh, for people who like to play around with things. Cool. Thank you so much for having me on. Yeah, thank you so much for coming on. I feel like this was a a super informative thing. Um, I learned a ton. I feel way less intimidated by 3JS. And yeah. now I want to just go play with this all day. Um, to everybody who's watching, uh, please go check out Sarah's just vast body of work on CSS tricks on CodePen, um, all over the place. She does incredible stuff. Uh, for those of you who are interested, stay tuned. We're going to raid, um, and make sure you go check out learnwithjason.dev for upcoming shows. We are going to, we're going to stream all week. So, um, we've got UX workflows and prototyping tomorrow with Marissa Morby. Uh, we're going to do some stuff with, with Zeit now on, uh, on Wednesday. We've got some WordPress with Gatsby on Thursday and Friday. We're going to do Expo and React Native. It's going to be a whole lot of fun this week. Um, it's September in Twitch, which means if you want to subscribe, it's half price. Um, and that's all that I got. So, Sarah, thank you again so much. And to everybody watching. Hey, everybody. Yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.